Hi, good day everyone! This is Sir Jet, and I welcome you to another episode of the Contemporary World. It's now time to visit another continent and look at a snapshot of life there. We have been doing this for several meetings already, and today we will be visiting North America. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. I want to share to you a lecture I gave many years ago, around uh, maybe a decade ago, and it's about an issue that uh, was so popular in the world and it had its roots on what happened in North America centuries ago. This is about planking and it's rooted actually in racism. So, you know, in America, if you uh, watch the news, one big uh, issue there is racism. Many uh, black people are complaining that uh, the white people are racists and uh, they don't like how they are getting treated in America. Now, today we will look at how it all began. Okay? Uh, how uh, racism uh, became so rampant in the past decades or centuries and where is it going these days? And a little event that happened 10 years ago that sort of ruffled the feathers of our um, fellow human beings in North America. Okay, now to begin with, let me ask you a question. Who are the uh, famous African Americans that you admire? Okay, so by the way, in uh, our class, the contemporary world, one thing I want you to learn is that you should not be a racist. So avoid saying racist words. The proper word for or the proper term for these people is African American. Okay, that's the polite term. We, we usually hear the word Negro, okay? so that's a bad word. If you say that, they will be angry at you. Even the word black, okay? it's also not a very nice word. If you say, oh, I'm black or you're black, so that's that they, they feel that it's a racist word. So the correct, the polite word is African American. Okay, so from now on we'll call them African Americans. So going back to my question, who among these are your favorites or the one you admire? Okay, so as you can see they are from various fields and they are excellent people from show business to sports, politics, music, right? So you, do you recognize them? Uh, Coach Carter, I think his real name is Samuel Jackson. Uh, Muhammad Ali, he's called the greatest boxer. He calls himself the greatest. Um, Obama, of course, uh, first black president of the US. The Black Mamba, uh, Kobe Bryant. And uh, Michael Jordan, of course, they call him the GOAT. This is Ron Kinoli. He, he is a worship leader and composer. Um, uh, you know her, of course, uh, Oprah. Michael Jackson, uh, the king of pop. And of course, the, the Williams sisters in the field of tennis. And there are many, many more African Americans who are famous and excellent. Now, have you ever wondered what makes them excel? Okay. What's in them that makes them great? 
for a five foot seven guy who can fly high and dunk the ball how did that happen okay this is a uh, nate robinson he's just five feet seven inches with shoes <laughs> and he can dunk the ball he's a slam dunk champion in the nba and his pele he's like the michael jordan of football and uh usain bolt the fastest man on the planet they are african americans Okay, although uh, he's from South America and he's from Central America and this is from North America, but they are all African Americans. What makes them so special? What makes them fly high, run fast, and uh, so strong? You know, it's all about their genes. Okay? It's, it's their physique. It's something that... Uh, they that is embedded in their dna you know i have a friend who studied in the united states he's a filipino he stayed there for quite a long time he loves basketball and uh, he played with the american classmates in his university in pennsylvania and he told me he observed one thing about the african-american uh, basketball players that he played with it, these are not NBA players. They're just regular students in the university. But they can dunk effortless. <laughs> and he observed that their Achilles tendon is so thick. Okay, The Achilles tendon is the tendon that you have here at your heel. Okay? At the uh, back part of your, of your uh, leg. Okay? Near the ankle. There's a tendon there. And for us Filipinos, the Achilles tendon is just as thick as uh, your pinky. But for the African Americans, my friend observed that their uh, Achilles tendon is like a horse's Achilles tendon. It's this big in diameter. Imagine that your Achilles tendon is this big. Well, Filipinos only have this kind of Achilles tendon. So if you have an Achilles tendon this big, you must be very, very athletic. So it's in their genes. And you know, planking has something to do with that. Yes. So let me uh, explain to you what is planking. You know, planking is, uh, is a term that uh, became a fad it's a popular thing that young people do 10 years ago and it had its um, origin from uh, the time when the europeans discovered new lands and started colonizing them remember magellan columbus 1500s okay 1600s Actually, uh, beginning in the 1400s, Columbus is 1492. So beginning that time, these Europeans from here discovered two big continents that they don't know of. And so they started colonizing the lands here. Okay, And uh, of course, they got the part of uh, what we have now as the United States, okay? the British. And then the Spaniards got this part, Central America. And uh, this bulge over here, the Portuguese got this. Okay, that's uh, present-day Brazil. And many other Europeans got lands in North and South America. Now, these Europeans put up plantations of sugar and cotton and peanuts and many other crops. But they didn't want to work in the fields. They just want to sit pretty and, uh, and uh, rack in money from their fields. Okay, so who would be working in the fields if the white uh, Europeans wouldn't want to work in the fields? It has to be somebody else. So the colonizers, the European colonizers, got slaves from Africa. They went to Africa and uh, got 
the people there in chains and brought them to North, Central, and South America. Okay, they, they catch them like monkeys, chain them on the neck and hands, and uh, bring them to work in the fields that they have in North America, South America, Central America. Okay, so in, in South America, they have coffee plantations here. And they say Pele's parents used to work there in the, in the uh, plantation. And in America, you have uh, cotton fields. In Cuba, you have sugar plantations. And uh, the ones working in those fields were Africans. Okay? They were slaves of the white men. And this is how they were brought to America, the ships then okay, would uh, have a lower deck and they would stuff them with people, with Africans, okay? and made, make the ships cross the Atlantic Ocean until they reach North America, South America, Central America. And that's called the transatlantic slave trade. Trans means across. Across the Atlantic, a slave trade. Okay, why, uh, uh, why trade? Because they will get sold once they reach America. Now, in the ship, this is how they look like. This is a cross section, top view of a ship. Can you imagine this? Okay, so you slice open the ship, you are uh, seeing a top view of the ship. And all these Africans are lying down flat on their back or flat on their belly, okay, shoulder to shoulder on the floor of the ship. Okay, and there would be several floors down the lower deck of the ships. And they, they say you cannot really stand up because the next floor is just on your face. Hey, you, you're you're placed in a shelf, technically. Hey? Imagine you're put inside a shelf. You're just lying down and uh, you cannot stand up because there's a board just there in front of you, on top of you. And another set of people lying on that board in front of you. And there are several of those boards or shelves inside the ship and you don't eat how can you eat in that position and you can't really urinate and uh, do your nature call because you are lying down you cannot stand up you cannot move side to side because on your left and on your right there's another uh, human being another african beside you it's really unimaginable and they would cross the uh, atlantic ocean for several days i don't know how many weeks but it will be several days in that position wow amazing and if you you cannot uh, really uh, eat and you you just urinate there on your floor and your uh, buddy beside you also do the same. Many died in the journey. Okay? Died of hunger, of disease. And when they reached America, the strongest ones were the ones who would come out of the ship. Those who were weak, they would die in the planking position inside the belly of the ship and when they come out of the ship they would be sold in slave markets at the pier there would be uh, the slave uh, buyers okay the white Europeans and they would be sorting the people and of course you would buy the hunky ones the strong ones they would have a higher price compared to the, the, the smaller or um, less muscular ones. 
Okay, and 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 so how about the weaklings? They don't get sold. They they die inside the ship. So around just one third would make the trip. Two thirds would die. Can you imagine that if if there there's a hundred African captives in the ship, only around thirty would make it to America. The 70 would die along the way. And so, if you survive the ship, that means you are the fittest in your batch. Okay? That means you are the strongest. You have the best genes among the 100 people loaded on the ship. Those with weak genes would die. And so these strong ones who made the trip, okay, they were the ones who worked in the plantations of the colonialists, the Europeans who owned the cotton fields and the sugar fields. They are, they are uh, hunky and strong. Their genes are, are so good and they can endure the hard work in those fields owned by the white men and they were actually the great 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 grandparents of the famous african americans today that's why these guys in the modern times are so strong and athletic because it's the genes of their grandfathers who survived the difficult trip the transatlantic trip that killed the weak ones it's the survival of the fittest and so they inherited the genes of those strong africans so they are the african americans that you see in the nba in uh, other uh, sports and they also have great genes with their voice, okay? they are good singers, and they practically excel in every field there is. So, now in the modern times, in 1997, okay, we uh, segue to a different uh, page in, in our story. Two British youngsters in the United Kingdom, okay, a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old uh, guy, okay, invented a game called the lying down game out of boredom. Uh, they, they just lie down like that with their uh, belly on the ground and uh, they try to outdo one another. Okay? Patagalan. <laughs> And that's uh, their board, their game invented out of boredom. Now today, this is how they look like. Okay? So they're no longer 15 and 12 years old today because in 1997, they were teenagers. And that game, 10 years later, uh, gained popularity. So for 10 years, it's just a game that the two of them played. But 10 years later, in 2007, that game uh, spread all over the world, like wildfire, okay? because of Facebook. Okay? Facebook was invented and their game uh, was popularized because of the pictures that some people post. And that game became the planking game. Okay? So I don't know how old were you in 2007. I was already grown up in 2007 and indeed I saw a lot of people doing this uh, silly thing of just planking for uh, several minutes they're not moving and uh, they they think it's cool and they have their friend take a picture of what they're doing and post it on facebook and many copied it and they started planking in several places even in dangerous places like who the the engine of a plane and on a street where a car can pass by and run you over. And from the United Kingdom, it spread to the rest of the world. 
So beginning in 2007, other countries uh, followed suit and they have a different name depending on the place. In Korea, it's called Playing Dead. In the U.S., it's called Face Down. In France, it's called Lying on the Belly. And in Australia, it's called Planking. Okay? So you can ask your ate or kuya if they did planking <laughs> when they were young. Now, it's a worldwide craze. Celebrities even do it. Not only ordinary people, including Justin Bieber and Ellen Page. They also did planking. And also high-profile people like the son of the Prime Minister of New Zealand. And he had his father post beside him. And uh, this picture made rounds in the internet. You know, the son of the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister supporting him. But some people didn't like it. It's not funny for them. Okay? The African Americans thought that it's a racist act. A rapper named Exhibit condemns it. Okay? And he called it an insult to their race. Why? Because planking is like uh, reminding them of what their grandfather did and what their grandfather was a century ago. Planking is for slaves. So if you do planking, it's like pointing a finger at the African Americans and saying, hey, once upon a time you're like this. It's like uh, giving them a dirty finger, you know. It's, it's, it's an insult. So if they see people planking, they feel bad about themselves. It's like uh, telling them that the planker is like telling the, the African American that, hey, you're a slave. Okay? And, and, and so that is not a nice idea after all. Okay? Planking is not a nice idea after all. Aside from plank, aside from the racist angle on planking, it's also dangerous. Some people died because of planking. Here's a guy from Australia, an actor, uh, fell from the seventh floor of the building because he was planking. Okay? Now, the Philippines is not spared. It's also a place where lots of people followed that uh, planking thing. No? Everywhere in Jollibee, <laughs> even on the police car, on toilets, wow. And they post it on social media thinking it's funny, it's cool. But these people do not know the story behind planking, that it was once uh, an act done on the slaves. Okay? Even in top universities, they do planking. So it's 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 a it's a story that is untold, you know. What's planking all about? And and so we must know that uh, planking is not good. And we, as Malayan students have this challenge, you know. Although the planking craze is now over, uh, it's a good thing that Malayan students didn't really follow uh, the, the planking fad as uh, rapidly as, as the others. And uh, planking is no longer practiced today. But the issue of racism is still there. So in America, uh, they, they, it's still a big problem that they face in their society. And uh, I hope okay, uh, it would be a nice place, a better place, if all the people in the world would just love one another and uh, look at our neighbor, not because of their skin color, but because of their, uh, because, of, because they are humans just like us, and treat one another correctly, okay? and nicely, and with love. So, 
that would make our place a better world. We are studying the contemporary world and it's our dream that the contemporary world would be a nice place to live in, free of racism. So I hope you learned a lot today about North America and its uh, connection to Africa, why there are many uh, African Americans in America today. I hope uh, you learned a lot. Okay, so next meeting, we will visit another continent, South America. Until then, this is Sir Jet saying goodbye and thank you.